In this video, I'm going to show you the quickest and simplest way to repot your bonsai, and it's almost completely free of risk. Enjoy the video. In springtime, bonsai artists everywhere are busily repotting many of their trees to help keep them small, beautiful and healthy. Repotting in spring is also a perfect moment to prune the roots and work towards a nice radial root spread and hopefully future nabari. But what if you don't have enough time for delicate root work? Or you don't want to risk such aggressive root pruning, perhaps because you left it too late in summer, when the foliage needs more water than the remaining roots can supply. So for these situations we need a quick and simple foolproof method to repot the tree and give it another year of healthy root growth. And I'm not talking about slip potting, because there you leave the roots undisturbed and move it to a bigger container. Whereas in this method we do some root pruning and we use the same pot it was in before and no wires are needed. So let's take a closer look at this method that I call pot refresh. Here's our pot with the tree that we potted last year and since then the roots have grown all round the inside edges. And we're going to let it drain a bit because we don't want the soil to be sopping wet. Now let's take the complete root ball out of the pot and we're going to start by scraping away the moss, weeds and dead leaves off the soil surface. And you can use the implement of your choice but I find the spatula with tweezers works best and I'll show you why in just a minute. Next we need to remove the stubborn moss and algae from the trunk base with an old toothbrush and some very diluted vinegar. Now if your roots have completely outgrown the soil base, you can quickly deal with it using a branch saw. And I must reiterate, spring is the best time to do this so that your tree doesn't suffer. And now it's time to snip through those windy edge roots and you want to keep the soil clump intact if possible. Now we place a thin layer of fresh soil on the pot floor. And if you previously used a stone to enhance the nabari, now's the time to place it back in the pot. And likewise, you can now return the leaner root ball to the pot and finish up with a fresh top dressing of fine granular bonsai soil and a good watering. And remembering to hit the subscribe button. On this Dishojo maple, you can see that the roots haven't completely filled the pot yet. And you can also see the stone that I placed last year to enhance the nabari. So I could leave this in the pot for another year, but I want to deal with the matted roots around the edge and give the topsoil a refresh. So here's the spatula to remove the moss, and in a minute you'll see why I particularly like this utensil for the job. Some of that moss is stuck so stubbornly to the soil that I'm going to turn the spatula around and cheat by using the tweezer end. And this works like a very fine root rake, prizing the little rhizoids out of the soil. And now I need to remove the moss and algae from the trunk base. I found the trees in shallower pots seem to collect more algae, perhaps because the soil surface tends to stay more damp than in deeper pots. And now it's time to snip through those side winding roots. And any stray upward roots. So that root ball is now ready, and before I prepare the pot, I'm just going to check the stone still fits in properly. And it does of course. And now a base layer of fresh soil with the stone already in place. And there's room for improvement with a profile cut, or a bowl cut, as I'm now calling it. 
We just need to be sure that the roots have enough room to grow out during the coming year. And now a tidy up with the infamous spatula and dealing with any stray roots. It may look insignificant, but we don't want that root to grow upwards over the next year. And giving the pot a quick clean with water and a rag. Now finishing up with a fresh layer of top dressing. And for this topsoil, I use small grain akadama mixed with kiriyazuna, about 50-50. The akadama retains water a bit better, but the kiryu holds its structure better, so it's a great combination. And both change colour between wet and dry, so you can immediately see when it needs watering. There you go, pot refresh in less than 5 minutes. And now I'm going to do the same on this deshojo, and you already know the drill, so this one will be finished in literally 15 seconds. Of course this was a quick and simple repotting, but for a more complete understanding of the repotting and root pruning process, take a look at this video 